Hey, how's it going, everybody? Scott Spritzer here with Doug Upstone. We are DocSports.com. We are talking SEC football, little Pac-12 action thrown into this one. And here's the deal. Doug and I are going to be here each and every week with SEC Weekly. We're going to talk about the SEC every single week of the college football season. Check out all three of our SEC-involved videos uh, for this week's card. This one's LSU at UCLA. Uh, listen, here's the bottom line. I'm going to go out on a limb and say there will be more than 15 or 20,000 fans in Pasadena at the Rose Bowl, which is about all they got for the Hawaii. I mean, come on, Bruin fans. I know it was Hawaii. I know they're not any good. I know you got a million things to do in SoCal, but 15 to 20,000 fans, they fudge the number up to like 30,000 or something like that. Uh, bring the eight clap back to the Rose Bowl. Let's get it going. Uh, but anyway, having said all of that, LSU has been as high as a four and a half point favorite. Uh, they're currently laying three, total down a little bit to 65. Uh, Doug, the tickets are split down the middle in this one as we speak. Uh, but as you can tell by the line movement, UCLA has been the sharp side so far this week. 65% of the money coming in right now on the Bruins. Your thoughts? Well, Scott, you know what? First of all, I just want to let you know, hey, you know what? I'm fired up to do this SEC every week. And so if in order, I should say in honor of the SEC, hey, let's pull out the Dr. Pepper here, okay? Let's get it going. The Got got to got to have that. Got to celebrate it. We got Fanville coming up later. Uh, once once these games start uh, with the with that drama that they have every week there. So no. So we're ready for football here, and I'm ready for the SEC now. One thing that I do wonder about though is LSU ready. Okay, because one of the big things in handicapping uh, that you see every single year is when one team has played a game versus another team that has it. That's sure. always a big difference because one of the things every team, every coach has a great deal of um, worry going into that first game because he's seen this team practice, but they haven't hit somebody else. So they're just, they don't know what exactly what they have. UCLA now, they have had game film. They, yeah, Hawaii was no good. There wasn't, I watched the game Tuesday night, the first half of it to tr see what I could learn about UCLA. I didn't learn much because Hawaii was so terrible. Uh, did I think UCLA was that great? No, okay, I didn't, but but they obviously were far more impressive, but they got that game under their belt, okay? So I think that's that's a big thing. The better team, in my opinion, uh, Scott, is LSU. I mean, across the board, physical, a bit bigger team. But here's the thing, if UCLA can just get their, uh, their the quarterback, uh, is Max Johnson, that's his name, Max Johnson, who, who is the really was the backup quarterback, yeah. if they can get him, if they can stop the run on early downs, force him to throw, that changes the dynamic of the game, I think, a little bit. Now, the other aspect that I've been watching UCLA play was Dorian Thompson Robinson. He didn't throw the ball that well. And that kind of what we saw last year. When he got in a good groove, he was fine. But there was plenty of other times, whether it be within games or games just in general, he didn't always throw the ball well. So if, if he can't throw the ball well against LSU, they're going to turn loose that pass rush, and he'll be running all over the field in, in this one. Uh, and, and I look at this, you, you, uh, excuse me, LSU is a top uh, four team in the SEC, uh, UCLA, middle of the road in the Pac-12, I would say. Obviously, we know who the better conference is. The line dropping down the three concerns me some here. So I'm going to take the, let's just say, the easy way out, if you will. And so I'm going to recommend LSU on the money line, which is not that badly priced at 145. And so I'll go that direction instead of anything to do with the points, thinking that the better team gets the job done on the road. Scott, what's your thoughts you know, on the you Bruins and the Tigers? Yeah, you, you mentioned, you know, having that first game under your belt and the opponent hasn't played yet. And I can remember, you know, I grew up in Nebraska and uh, the great Tom Osborne used to say uh, every year, you know, the greatest improvement you make throughout any portion of the season whether it be spring football or actual regular season action or August fall camp, is that improvement you make between games one and games two. And he felt it was always a huge advantage for obviously that team had, that had played a game against a team that had not. Uh, so that's what UCLA has in their favor. You know, like you, I was a little bit disappointed in UCLA's offense last week. I know they won 44 to 10. I know they had 44 points by you know, maybe five minutes to go in the third quarter, probably could have scored 60 if they wanted. By the way, I'm happy they didn't because I had a bet on UCLA under and gave that out as the freebie last week. So I was almost ready to put that one in the loss column with three minutes to go in the third, but nobody scored after that. Thank you very much. 
I'm a little surprised. Now, maybe Chip Kelly thinks that the, the defense that his quarterback faces every day in practice is night and day better than the defense he saw on Saturday. So he didn't need to test him through the air. And he's right. Obviously, UCLA's defense is night and day better than Hawaii's. But the bottom line is, is when they got comfortably ahead and they weren't going to make any mistakes to keep Hawaii around or in the game for any length of time, I really thought they would try more through the air in a live game action rather than just practice. And I think they only threw for like a buck 30, 130 yards starting quarterback. And so I don't know, man. Again, maybe Chip Kelly is so comfortable by what he's seen in practice that he didn't need to see it in an actual game. As far as LSU is concerned, listen, they've been practicing in Houston uh, due to Hurricane Ida. Uh, I've wondered if LSU fans are going to show up in the same droves that they would have uh, at Pasadena, if not for the hurricane and the things they're having to deal with now in uh, the New Orleans and Baton Rouge area. Uh, I mean, this they would have outnumbered UCLA fans at the Rose Bowl, no doubt in my mind. I, I can remember going to UCLA games when Nebraska played there in the mid-90s where they were actually a legitimate football program. And there would be, you know, 40,000 Husker fans and 25,000 UCLA fans. You know, so I know LSU would have outnumbered their fans. I just don't know if they will now. Having said all that, not knowing if they're going to have a big uh, home field feeling with a bunch of LSU fans in the crowd, it is a Joes versus Pros game. And there was a couple of games last week where the Joes, I mean, 9 out of 10 had one side and it won. And the few Sharps out there that bet the game were on the other side and it lost. There's not, it's not often that I want to go against uh, the public, excuse me, go against the Sharps uh, when they're head-to-head -head against the public. Right now, the Sharps are on UCLA. Having said that, at three, I think it's a great number, Doug. Uh, the toughest thing to handicap again is, is UCLA anywhere close to as good as a 44-10 final score against Hawaii? And when you look at what's going to happen here, there are 20 returning starters for UCLA. I get that. But they're not as good as LSU in the trenches. And I'm going to cut this down now because I have been getting long-winded here. Uh, but I had a lot of thoughts on this game. I hate to be that guy, but I have LSU winning by a field goal. So I'm going to tell people right now that I will not lay the points. And I'm going to defer to my partner here on SEC Weekly, Doug Upstone, and say if you're going to get involved in this game, that is not a bad way to go. I hadn't come into this video planning on that, but I think a buck 45-ish LSU money line is the way to go. Because to tell you the truth, before you mention that, I was probably going to pass because I think three is exactly where this number should be. So, you know, that's an opinion, and uh, Doug's your man this week. We will give him all the praise, or we will give him all the hate mail if this game doesn't win. <laughs> I'm just jumping on this bandwagon. Doug, let us know what's going on this week for you over at DocSports.com. The, uh, well, besides all my money line plays this week, Scott, you know, my uh, minus 550 uh, parlays and stuff on money lines. Besides those, I'm also going to uh, have a six unit play going this weekend, try and improve upon last week's uh, Illinois victory. That was a four unit play uh, with the Illinois upset. And so, as uh, I've mentioned in some of the other videos, uh, ended uh, the last season really strongly, hitting 64.5% in the last uh, 62 plays. Uh, I don't want to keep have to repeating this for those of you that are watching video multiple videos of ours but so it was very good so i'm going to try and get off to a great start yet again this year and see if we can make it happen and i know scott your intentions are exactly the same by the way one of those i mentioned there was a couple of sharps and squares things going on last week uh, everybody and their mother was on the under the ucla game and i knew that going in and whew, that's all I'm going to say on that video last week. We cashed anyway. Um, but anyway, I was going to say also real quickly, watch the other videos. We talked plenty about of what we've done last year, our history at DocSports.com. It's now time to start talking about this day forward. And we do have a seven-star play. I have a seven-star play going this particular weekend uh, in college football, multiple game college football package. And uh, listen, we, as Doug mentioned, we hope to get off to a great start and kind of kick things off where we finished up last year, both of us in football. And of course, next week, it's the NFL. For Doug Upstone, I'm Scott Spritzer. We are DocSports.com. Let's put them in the win column.